Hi, I'm Stephen Malloy. This is an extract from my latest book, Advertising, How Apps Are Changing the World. Available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, iBookstore, and more. Visit advertising-book.com. The App Store, an accidental success. The iPhone revolution. Apps were born in 2007 when Apple launched its first iPhone. But it was an accidental birth. While apps and the App Store have been a huge success for Apple, they weren't initially part of Apple's grand design. We want to reinvent the phone. What's the killer app? The killer app is making calls. It's amazing how hard it is to make calls on most phones. We want to let you use your contacts like never before. Sync your iPhone with your PC or Mac. Steve Jobs. The iPhone was all about making mobiles more user-friendly, making it easier to make calls and use contacts. Initially, it was seen as just another mobile phone in an already crowded market, and it was widely predicted to fail, especially by players in the mobile industry. There is no chance the iPhone is going to get any significant market share. No chance. Steve Ballmer, 2007. But of course it didn't fail. It was an instant success and a demonstration of the power of not being the first to market and develop a product that met the needs of consumers, needs that were unknown before they started using their iPhones. And a one of its key attractions was the distinctive difference of the iPhone from conventional mobiles. Its built-in touch applications, or apps, rather than buttons. This engaged both users and developers. What do you see when you turn on the iPhone? Apps. Essentially, the iPhone turned the mobile into a software app. Everything on the iPhone was an app. This concept changed what a mobile phone was and how it was used. Developers started trying to crack the iPhone's operating system, iOS, and develop apps for users by jailbreaking their iPhones. Several of today's hit iPhone games began life as unsanctioned apps. And the Appillionaires owe much of their success to this pioneering few who dared tinker with their expensive new iPhones to install software. At the time, the work of these hackers seemed little more than a curiosity, but it would ultimately change everything. Chris Stevens, Appillionaires. The iPhone's underground app store, Cydia, became so popular that Apple's CEO Steve Jobs took the unusual step of pre-announcing that an official app store was on its way. Launch of the App Store. The official launch of the App Store was on the 10th of July 2008, with downloadable apps for the iPhone and iPod Touch. The next generation of iPhone, the iPhone 3G, was launched the following day with downloadable programs, GPS, and faster data. It was such a runaway success that the launch day recorded AT&T's best ever day sales. The App Store was also an instant success. At launch, the App Store had about 550 apps, a mixture of free and paid, about a third of which were games. And the most popular downloads for the first couple of years were games. More than 10 million iPhone apps were downloaded in the first three days, and 60 million in the first month. Two months later, 100 million apps had been downloaded, and there were over 3,000 mobile apps available in the App Store. More than 600 free, and 90% priced at less than $10. A month later, just over 100 days after launch, 200 million apps had been downloaded. The next milestone was 1 billion apps downloaded, reached in April 2009. The App Store website celebrated with the following caption. Thanks a billion, over 1 billion downloads in just 9 months. 
By November 2009, more than 100 million iPhones and iPod Touch apps were being downloaded each month. Apple users were averaging 11 app downloads a month, three times more than the average Android users, and six times more than the average BlackBerry users. In September 2009, games lost their dominant position in the App Store market to books with books now accounting for one out of every five new iPhone and iPod Touch apps. The pace of the app downloads and new apps available has continued to accelerate. Here are some of App Store milestones. On the 7th of January 2011, Apple launched the Mac App Store, with apps designed for Mac computers. Christmas 2011 saw a frenzy of app downloads, with more than a billion apps downloaded in a single week, according to analytics firm Flurry. A huge 509 million apps were downloaded in the USA, while 99 million were downloaded in China and 81 million in Great Britain. In its blog, Flurry predicted that in 2012, breaking the 1 million barrier per week will become more commonplace. Flurry also estimated that nearly 7 million iPhones and Android devices were activated on Christmas Day. When the App Store reached 25 billion downloads in March 2012, Apple's website featured the following caption. A billion thanks, 25 times over. By September 2012, App Store downloads had increased by another 10 billion to reach 35 billion. In January 2013, it became 40 billion downloads. The 40 billion milestone does not include updates or re-downloads. The start of the iPad phenomena. The next iOS product to contribute to the phenomenal growth of apps available and downloaded was the iPad tablet. As Steve Jobs revealed after the successful release of the iPad tablet in 2010, Apple began developing the iPad before the iPhone, but temporarily shelved the project when they realized that the ideas behind the iPad would work just as well in a mobile phone. When it was launched, the iPad became a runaway success for Apple. In April 2010, in the first four weeks after its launch, one million iPads were sold and more than 12 million iPad apps were downloaded from the App Store. By the time the iPad 2 was launched in 2011, more than 15 million iPads had been sold, and it was seen as a must-have entertainment and work device. In the fourth quarter of 2011 alone, Apple sold 15.4 million iPads. Today, people are increasingly using their iPads in place of traditional computers. While advertisers and marketers are beginning to dabble with the iPad, established publishing brands took the bull by the horns and developed iPads apps as an extension of their offering. For example, Business Spectator has an app focusing on video interviews and commentary. Fairfax Media has a portfolio of websites, tablets and smartphone apps, including the online news sites smh.com.au and theage.com.au, and the Nine Network has Nine Newsbreak for iPad. How the App Store works The App Store is accessible from the iPhone, iPod Touch and iPad via an iOS app. The store is also accessible through iTunes and on any operating system for which iTunes is provided, Mac, OS X and Windows. One of the keys to the App Store's early runaway success is the centralised payment system through iTunes. Millions of potential customers had already supplied Apple with their credit card information to buy songs through iTunes. The same process was used by Apple for payment of apps. People were and are willing to pay small, one-off sums for low-cost, single-purpose apps, so long as it is to Apple, a company they trust, through iTunes. This payment system has proved... This payment system has proved convenient for both customers and developers. One app can now potentially make a lot of money for its developer from thousands of very small transactions, and the developer has no worries about collecting the money. The App Store's win-win strategy. 
the App Store's win-win strategy. Apple quickly realized after the launch of the App Store that popular apps could not only make money for Apple. Apple receives a 30% commission on all app sales and their developers, but also sell iPhones. A good example was iBeer. This app gave Apple lots of free publicity for their iPhone as users love demonstrating the app to their friends. iBeer took the concept of drinking beer and linked it to the iPhone's accelerometer, a feature which detects the angle at which the iPhone is being held. A user could take out their phone and pretend they were drinking a beer. The app originally cost $3 and was created in 2008 by indie independent developer Hot Tricks. Competitors soon jumped on the bandwagon, e.g. iPint, and it is now a free app. Apple set a low entry bar for developers, just $99 to sign up as an iPhone developer. In return, Apple made their SDK, Software Development Kit, available as a free download to developers. The App Store has been one of Apple's huge successes. It was estimated as at 19th December 2011 that the App Store is worth around $7.08 billion. One of its unique features is that it's a win-win for everyone. Not just for Apple, but also for developers and users. It's also a win-win for users who love apps and are voting with their wallets and an ever-increasing volume of downloads. For developers, the App Store represents the first time a distribution channel has existed for a single developer to distribute their products to tens of millions of people. Even if the App Store is not a gold mine that will turn any game developer into a billionaire, it is still a revolution in the industry. It has allowed very small teams to make fun games relatively cheaply and commercialize them in a very simple way potentially reaching millions of players. Never before have we seen so many indies and such a great creativity in the indie world. And for some developers, it has been a goldmine. Apple announced in June 2010 that developers had earned more than $1 billion in App Store revenues. In March 2012, it reported that it gets more than 26,000 apps submitted to its iPhone and iPad App Store every week about 1.3 million a year. App Store approval process. All apps are subject to approval by Apple, and this has caused quite a lot of friction between developers and Apple. In the early days, developers complained about inconsistency and a lack of transparency in Apple's approval process. Apple improved the process by providing guidelines and information on the approval process, specifying the issues that cause an app to be rejected and reducing the time taken to approve an app. In September 2010, Apple published its App Store Review Guidelines for developers on its website with rules and examples across a range of development topics including user interface design, functionality, content and the use of specific technologies. Apple also rates apps worldwide based on their content and suitability for different age groups. From a 4 plus rating, contains no objectionable material and suitable for all ages, to a 17 plus rating, only suitable for users who are 17 plus. During Apple's Worldwide Developers Conference 2010, Steve Jobs said that apps were rejected for three main reasons. They don't function as advertised. They use private APIs, i.e. functions that are not available in the iOS SDK. The app crashes frequently. Eric Mack listed the five apps banned from Apple's App Store in 2011. 1. Driver's License Which allowed users to create a fake driver's license using a photo, biographical information and a US state template of their choice. It was removed after two years on the App Store as concerns had been expressed by a U.S. senator that it encouraged identity theft. 2. Apps like Buzzed, which provide information about nearby DUI checkpoints to help over-the-limit drivers avoid DUI checkpoints. 
On its App Store guidelines, Apple now bans apps which contain DUI checkpoints that are not publicised by law enforcement agencies or encourage and enable drunk driving. 3. Phony Story Only lasted a few hours in the App Store. It was a game that allowed players to force African miners to extract the minerals used in the manufacture of iPhones and other things at gunpoint. Apple clearly does not like the games that criticise Apple. 4. iTether allows iOS users to turn an iPhone into a portable modem and tether their 3G connection to a laptop or other device to get online when there's no Wi-Fi around. It was pulled from the App Store as it violates the carrier's terms of use. Plus, its one-time fee is significantly cheaper than the usual monthly fee charged for internet access. 5. Torcon is an app which determines how much radiation users are soaking up while using their smartphone, plus tips on how to lower their dosage. The app was rejected by Apple. Steve Jobs' response reportedly was no interest. Note that an Android version of the app has been downloaded hundreds of thousands of times and generally gets good reviews. In March 2012, Apple said that it rejects close to 30% of apps submitted for failure to adhere to its developers' guidelines. Wrap up. Apps have only been around since 2007, and they came about by accident. It was Apple's decision to use apps rather than buttons on its first mobile phone, the iPhone, that caught the imagination of both users and developers. A new era of smartphones, tablets and apps had begun. The App Store was launched a year later, in 2008, and has been a runaway success. As of September 2012, there were over 700,000 apps available in the App Store, and there have been 35 billion, now 40 billion January 2013, downloads. Winners have been Apple, app developers and the users. The Smartphone Explosion Apple wasn't the first to market with a mobile phone. Motorola was the early innovator with the first mobiles appearing in 1983. By 2008, the mobile phone market was dominated by Nokia and BlackBerry. Apple's great innovation in the mobile phone market, with the launch of iPhone in 2007, was to fundamentally change what a mobile, or cell phone, was and how it was used. It invented the smartphone, and all others in the marketplace found that they had to move to the smartphone operating system OS in order to stay competitive. Competitors quickly followed Apple and developed smartphones and stores with their mobile apps. Google bought a small startup company, Android, in 2005 and made apps available on the Android market. Microsoft released the App Store Marketplace to support its new Windows Phones platform. Nokia released the OV Store. Samsung created Samsung Apps and RIM, Research in Motion, launched its application store, BlackBerry App World. Usage is growing fast and is outpacing the PC revolution of the 1980s and the internet boom of the 1990s. According to IDC, over 800 million PCs were sold between 1981 and 2000. Since 2007, more than 500 million iOS and Android smartphones and tablets have been activated. In 2011, smartphone sales exceeded PC sales. And it is estimated that tablets will exceed PC sales in two to three years. Flurry estimates that by the end of 2012, more than one billion smartphones and tablets will have been activated. In other words, the rate of adoption of smart devices is more than four times faster than that of PCs. We are seeing a huge shift in consumer behavior. The 2012 Our Mobile Planet smartphone research shows that the highest smartphone adoption is in Australia, UK, Sweden, Norway, Saudi Arabia and the UAE, United Arab Emirates, all with more than 50% of their population on smartphones. An additional seven countries, the US, New Zealand, Denmark, Ireland, Netherlands, Spain and Switzerland, have more than 40% smartphone penetration and smartphones are increasingly becoming part of our daily lives. 
We are using them to make and receive phone calls, send and receive text messages, send and receive emails, access the web, take and share photos, videos, and download and use a wide variety of apps. Competition in the smartphone marketplace. I think right now it's a battle for the mind share of developers and for mind share of customers. And right now, iPhone and Android are winning that battle. Steve Jobs. While the other smartphone players have been playing catch up with Apple, both the projections and the actual figures are changing the picture dramatically. The battle right now is between Google's Android and Apple's iOS. On the 11th of February 2011, Nokia announced that it would migrate from Symbian to Windows Phone 7. Nokia CEO Stephen Elop announced Nokia's first Windows Phone at Nokia World 2011, the Lumina 800 and Lumina 710. These phones were launched on 14th November 2011. Android increased its market share in the second quarter of 2011 to 43.3%, while Apple increased its share to 18.2%. This gave these two players dominance in the smartphone market, with a combined market share of nearly 62%, nearly double their market share of just over 31% in the corresponding period of 2010. In the first quarter of 2012, according to research by Gartner, global mobile sales, including both cell phones and smartphones, fell 2% from the same time in 2011. It is interesting to note, however, that smartphone sales continued to grow. Sales of 144.4 million units for the first quarter of 2012 were up 44.7% from the previous year. Android is now the market leader, with a 56% market share, with Apple in second place with 22.9%, an increase from 16.9% in 2011. Samsung is now leading the charge of the Androids, while former high-flying mobile phone makers Nokia, BlackBerry and HTC are struggling, seeing sharp falls in their market shares over the last 12 months. Both Nokia and HTC are expected to release smartphones that will run on Microsoft's new Windows Phone 8. Samsung, despite its success with Android, has also launched some new models that run on Microsoft Windows 8. All these companies seem to be hedging their bets between Android and Microsoft. In the overall mobile market in 2012, Samsung topped Nokia from the number one spot it had held since 1998. Samsung also overtook Apple in the smartphone market, selling 38 million smartphones worldwide, more than 40% of Android-based smartphones worldwide. Android as a whole, accounted for more than half of all smartphone sales, 56.1% in the first quarter of 2012. Apple sales were up 96.2% over the year, allowing it to more than double its share of the market. Sales in China were particularly strong. With more than 5 million units, China is now recognised the second largest market for Apple after the US. The key players in the smartphone market are now Android, with Samsung dominant, and iOS. The players who are losing out, Nokia and BlackBerry, dominated the mobile market until the rise of the smartphone in 2008. While Android is tipped to have nearly 50% of the smartphone market by 2012, Apple has most of the apps, and it is the only company to date that has provided a solid sales outlet for app developers. According to Business Insider, the future of mobile, developers still have a preference for iOS. Balanced against this are figures that show that the app potential for non-iOS smartphones is growing, while the Apple App Store is losing app market share. Why? Because Android apps run on a variety of devices, while Apple apps are only for Apple devices. The Rise of Tablets Research released in June 2012 by IDG Connect shows that tablets are increasingly being used by corporate professionals. 71% of the 3,000 plus IT and business professionals responding to the survey said they already own a tablet, with roughly 3 in 5 using it daily for work. This trend appears likely to continue.
with 80% of the IDG Connect survey respondents who do not own a tablet intending to buy one in the next year. Of these, 44% expect to purchase an Android tablet, against 27% preferring an iPad. If these intentions hold true, it will mark a shift from current ownership trends. 51% of the respondents who currently own a tablet have an iPad, while 38% own an Android tablet. This preference for Android tablets among first-time buyers holds true across all geographic regions. The largest percentage point disparities are in South America. 50% Android versus 21.7% iPad. Europe, 49.3% Android versus 22.7% iPad. And Africa, 43.6% Android versus 20.5% iPad. While in North America, first-time buyers' preferences are relatively on a par, with 30.1% expecting to buy an Android against 29.1% expecting to choose an iPad. Despite this, Android still has a long way to go to catch up with Apple. Apple ups the ante. Apple and Google are battling it out in the arenas of smartphones, tablets and cloud computing and are also trying to attract the best software developers. Their strategies are different. Apple keeps a tight control on its app store and the apps integrate seamlessly with the hardware. Google is taking an open system approach of creating software that runs on a variety of smartphones and tablets. This has allowed Android to capture the market lead in smartphones, although Apple's profit margins remain superior. Android is also offering several hardware rivals to Apple, with Samsung's Android-driven Galaxy S3 comparing favorably to the iPhone and Amazon's Kindle Fire challenging the iPad. On the 12th of June 2012, Apple's CEO Tim Cook, who took over from Steve Jobs late August 2011, unveiled Apple's updated mobile operating software, iOS 6, to help keep Google and its fast-growing Android mobile platform at bay. iOS 6 will be launched in the American fall. It comes with a built-in mapping system, sidelining the Google Map service that currently receives about half its traffic from iPhones and iPads. Apple also announced that it will also be dropping the YouTube app from the iOS 6. Currently, Google is the default search engine on the Safari browser on iPhones and iPads. There is speculation that this may change, in favor of either Yahoo or Bing. Apple has already dropped Google in China, favoring China's Baidu. Siri, the voice-activated iPhone search feature that has been heavily criticized by users to date, has been upgraded and will be available on iPads. Facebook has also been integrated deeper into the operating system, allowing Siri users to post photos with voice commands. To maintain their dominance of the tablet market, Apple launched a smaller, cheaper iPad in late October 2012. This will directly compete with Google's newly released Nexus 7 tablet and Amazon's Kindle Fire. And Apple has also the added benefit of more than 225,000 apps specifically tailored for the iPad. Launch of the iPhone 5 The latest member of the wildly popular iPhone family, iPhone 5, was launched on the 21st of September 2012 in San Francisco. Pre-orders from more than 2 million people smashed the company's previous sales record, and Apple's share price closed above $700 for the first time. The iPhone 5 Among the features of the iPhone 5 are a larger screen, an 80% smaller connector, an 8-hour battery life on LTE, and some updated apps to take advantage of the longer screen format. Older apps will not be stretched or scaled to fit the larger screen size. It is thinner than the iPhone 4S, is 20% lighter than its predecessor, and will operate with Apple's latest mobile operating system, iOS 6. Phil Schiller, Apple's senior vice president of worldwide marketing, said, iPhone 5 is the most beautiful consumer device that we've ever created. 
We've packed an amazing amount of innovation and advanced technology into a thin and light, jewel-like device with a stunning 4-inch retina display, blazing fast A6 chip, ultra-fast wireless, even longer battery life, and we think customers are going to love it. Apple also announced an updated iTunes, a new iPod Nano, and an iPod Touch. That makes the 4-inch screen of the iPhone 5, as well as new earphones for the new devices, dubbed EarPods. The question is, is it enough? Early reaction from the media was positive. Although Reuters says that the iPhone 5 lacks wow, the verdict of David Pogue was that the iPhone 5 is thinner and faster, but there is no breakthrough change. The Economist was even more disparaging. The title for its article on Apple's new smartphone, September 2012, said it all. Five out of ten. The iPhone 5 is hardly a great leap forward. It concludes that Apple will have to work harder to stay ahead of the pack. Since then, there has been some harsh criticism of Apple Maps, which replaces Google Maps in the iPhone 5. Under the heading Apple's Maps, its worst software product yet, Asher Moses made the following comment, Embarrassing, appalling, illogical, incomplete, erroneous. These words are rarely used to describe Apple's products, but all and more have been applied to Apple Maps in what observers are calling Apple's least usable piece of software yet. Observers comment that Apple Maps will take some time to fix. In the meantime, Google is reportedly months away from releasing a Google Maps apps for iOS. Google plays catch-up. By early 2012, close to a million Android devices were being purchased every day. At its annual developer-focused conference, Google I.O., in late June 2012, Google announced four new products as part of its ongoing contest with Apple. Google Glass. A prototype of Google Glass was made available to software developers. Simply put, Google Glass is a computer built into the frame of a pair of glasses. When users look up and to the right, they will be able to take and share photos, video chat, check appointments, access maps, and the web. Nexus 7. Nexus 7 is Google's entry into the tablet market. It is smaller than the iPad, and pricing is very competitive. $199, compared with the iPad's $399. As reporter Eddie Wren said, this is likely to hit the iPad where it hurts. Nexus Q. This is a black sphere that plugs into the TV and allows users to stream videos, music, films, and TV shows from the Google Play Store and YouTube. Android 4.1 Jelly Bean. Jelly Bean is a new version of Google's smartphone operating system, which includes a voice control and a version of Apple's Siri. It can also give users information from their location, e.g. traffic and bus information. Other announcements at the conference included Google+, Plus, Google's social network, has been updated, adding to the ability to create events and with an app for both Android and Apple tablets. Over 600,000 Android apps are now available in its Play Store, which will also begin selling films, TV shows, and magazines. In late September 2012, Google Play Store announced that Android devices have downloaded 25 billion apps since the market opened less than four years ago, in late 2008. The store currently has 675,000 apps and games available to download. In a blog post, Jamie Rosenberg, director of digital content at Google, explained how big a figure 25 billion is. 25 billion is more than twice the distance in miles that the Voyager 1 spacecraft has travelled since its launch 35 years ago. It's the amount of time in minutes that have passed since some of our earliest ancestors began to set foot in Europe. And now, thanks to all of you, it's a Google Play milestone. We look forward to the next 25 billion. Google also announced that Android handset activations had reached 500 million globally and are continuing to grow at around 1.3 billion activations a day. The contest between Apple and Google is getting serious. Hi, 
I'm Stephen Malloy. This is an extract from my latest book, Appetizing, How Apps Are Changing the World. Available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, iBookstore, and more. Visit advertising-book.com. Production by Philip Banks.